Hi, today we are going to talk about doubt. As you know, it is a crystal arthropathy or crystal deposition disease of the joints and is caused by the deposition of monosodium urate crystals in and around joints. It has become progressively more common over recent years in the affluent societies due to the increased prevalence of obesity and metabolic syndrome. Gout is the most common inflammatory arthritis in men and in older women. Its prevalence is almost 1%. Males are affected more than the females, with the male to female ratio is 5. The risk of developing gout increases with age and with serum uric acid levels. It is pertinent to note here that although hyperuricemia is a strong factor for gout, only a minority of hyperuricemic individuals actually develop gout. It typically presents with an acute monoarthropathy but sometimes can be polyarticular. More than 50% of cases occur at metatarsophalangeal joints of the big toe, also known as podagra. Other common joints are the ankle, foot, small joints of the hands, wrist, elbows or knees. It does not involve axial skeleton or proximal large joints. Plasma urate levels are usually raised but can be normal during an acute attack. In the long term disease, to 5 which are urate crystals deposit in the pinna, tendons, joints or it can be in the form of renal disease as renal stones or chronic renal disease due to interstitial nephritis. Risk factors can be categorized into two like reduced urate excretion and excessive urate production. Reduced urate excretion occurs in elderly people, men, postmenopausal females, impaired renal function, hypertension, metabolic syndrome, diuretics, certain antihypertensives, and aspirin. While excessive urate production can occur in the cases of increased dietary intake as alcohol, especially beer, sweeteners, red meat, seafood. Excess urate production can also occur in some genetic disorders or myelo and lymphoproliferative disorders, psoriasis, tumor lysis syndrome, and with drugs, for example, warfarin or cytotoxics. Gout is associated with cardiovascular disease, hypertension, diabetes mellitus, and chronic renal failure. And it is an independent risk factor for mortality from cardiovascular and renal diseases. Therefore, screen all patients of gout for chronic kidney disease, hypertension, dyslipidemia, and diabetes. About one-third of body uric acid pool is derived from dietary sources and two-thirds from endogenous purine metabolism. The concentration of uric acid body fluids depends on the balance between endogenous synthesis and elimination by kidneys and gut. Xanthine oxidase plays a pivotal role in purine metabolism. It catalyzes the conversion of hypoxanthine to xanthine and xanthine to uric acid. In over 90% of patients, the main abnormality is reduced uric acid excretion by the kidneys. Impaired renal excretion of urate also accounts for occurrence of hyperuricemia in chronic renal failure and for hyperuricemia associated with thiazide diuretic therapy. Other risk factors for gout include metabolic syndrome, high alcohol intake, predominantly beer, generalized osteoarthropathy, and a diet relatively high in offal, seafood, red meat, and fructose, or a diet low in vitamin C. The association between osteoarthritis and gout is thought to be due to reduction in the levels of proteoglycan and other inhibitors of crystal formation in osteoarthritic cartilage, predisposing to crystal formation. Lead poisoning may also cause gout, and this is known as saturnine gout. Severe hyperuricemia can also occur in patients with hematological and other cancers who are undergoing chemotherapy due to increased purine turnover. It is known as tumor lysis syndrome. This seldom leads to gout but can be associated with acute kidney injury. Some patients develop gout because they are overproducers. X-linked genetic disorder like Lesch-Nehan syndrome is an example. An inherited cause should be suspected if other clinical features are present or there is an early age at the onset with a positive family history. The classical presentation is with an acute monoarthritis which affects the first metatarsophalangeal joint in over 50% of cases. Other common sites are ankle, midfoot, knee, small joints of hands, wrist and elbow. The axial skeleton and large proximal joints are rarely involved. Attacks can be precipitated by trauma, surgery, starvation, infection or diuretics. Typical features include rapid onset reaching maximum, severity in 2-6 to six hours and often waking the patients in the early morning. Severe pain often described as the worst pain ever. Extreme tenderness such that patient is unable to wear sock. Marked swelling with overlying red shiny skin. This all is self-limiting over 5 to 15 days with complete resolution. 
During the attack, the joint shows signs of marked synovitis, swelling, and erythema. There may be accompanying fever, malaise, and even delirium, especially if a large joint such as the knee is involved. As the attack subsides, pruritus and desquamation of overlying skin are common. Acute attacks may also manifest as bursitis, tenosynovitis, or cellulitis, which have the same clinical characteristics. Many patients describe mild episodes lasting just a few days. Some have acute attacks in more than one joint. Others have further attacks in other joints a few days later. The first probably is acting as a trigger. Simultaneous polyarticular attacks are unusual. Some people never have a second episode and in other several years may elapse before the next one. In many, however, a second attack occurs within one year and may progress to chronic gout with chronic pain and joint damage and occasionally severe deformity and functional impairment. Patients with uncontrolled hyperuricemia who suffer multiple attacks of acute gout may also progress to chronic gout. Now coming on to the chronic gout, the presentation of gout in the elderly may be atypical with chronic symptoms rather than acute attacks. Crystals may be deposited in the joints and soft tissues to produce irregular firm nodules called tophi. They are usually a feature of long-standing gout but can sometimes develop within 12 months in patients with chronic renal failure. These have a predilection for the extensor surfaces of fingers, hands, forearm, elbows, Achilles tendon, and sometimes the helix of the ear. Tophi have a white color, differentiating them from rheumatoid nodules. Tophi can ulcerate discharging white gritty material, become infected, or induce a local inflammatory response with erythema and pus in the absence of secondary infection. Occasionally, tophi may develop in the absence of previous attacks, especially in patients on thiazides who have coexisting osteoarthritis. In addition to causing musculoskeletal disease, chronic hyperuricemia may be complicated by renal stone formation or if severe renal impairment due to the development of interstitial nephritis as a result of urate deposition in the kidney. This is particularly common in patients with chronic tophaceous gout who are on diuretic therapy. For differential diagnosis, rule of thumb is that exclude septic arthritis in any acute monoarthropathy. After septic arthritis, Consider reactive arthritis, hemarthrosis, CPPD, deposition disease, and palindromic rheumatoid arthritis as the differential diagnosis. Now coming on to the investigations, the diagnosis of gout can be confirmed by the identification of negative birefringent urate crystals in the aspirate from a joint bursa orthophus under polarized light microscopy. In acute gout, the synovial fluid may be turbid due to an elevated neutrophil count. In chronic gout, the appearance is more variable, but occasionally the fluid appears white due to the presence of urate crystals. Between the attacks, aspiration of an asymptomatic first metatarsophalangeal joint or knee may still reveal crystals. A biochemical screen including renal functions, uric acid, glucose, and lipid profile should be performed because of the association with metabolic syndrome. Hyperuricemia is usually present in gout, but levels may be normal during an attack because serum urate falls during inflammation. Acute gout is characterized by an elevated ESR and C-reactive protein and with neutrophilia, all of which return to baseline as the attack subsides. Tophaceous gout may be accompanied by a modest but chronic elevation in ESR and CRP. X-rays are usually normal in acute gout except showing soft tissue swelling. However, in chronic or tophaceous gout, well-demarcated punched-out erosions in juxta articular bone may be seen. There is no sclerotic reaction and joint spaces are preserved until late. Tophi may also be visible on X-rays on the soft tissue swellings. Management of gout should focus on first dealing with the acute attacks and then giving prophylaxis to lower serum uric acid levels and prevent further attacks. So, treatment of acute arthritis include oral colchicine given in dose of 0.5 mg twice or three times daily. It is the treatment of choice in acute gout but is slower to work. Oral NSAIDs are also effective but are used less commonly since many patients affected by acute gout have coexisting cardiovascular, cerebrovascular, or chronic kidney disease. Oral prednisolone or intramuscular methyl prednisolone for 2 to 3 days are highly effective and are a good choice in elderly patients where there is an increased risk of toxicity with colchicine and uric acid. Joint aspiration can give pain relief, particularly if a large joint is affected, and may be combined with an intraarticular glucocorticoid injection if the diagnosis is clear and infection can be excluded. Other supportive measures include rest and elevation of affected joint. Local ice packs can also be used for symptomatic relief. For prevention, 
Lifestyle measures including losing weight where appropriate, reduce excessive alcohol intake especially beer should be advised. Several antihypertensive drugs including thiazides, beta blockers and AC inhibitors increase serum uric acid levels whereas losartan has a uricose uric effect and should be substituted for other drugs if possible. Patient should also be advised to avoid large amount of seafood and offal which have a high purine content but a highly restrictive diet is not usually necessary. Prophylaxis medications are indicated if there is more than one attack in one year to facial scout or bone erosions on radiographs or there is renal calcular disease. The aim is to reduce attacks and prevent damage caused by crystal deposition. Use xanthine oxidase inhibitor allopurinol and titrate from 100 mg per 24 hours increasing every 4 weeks until plasma urate level is less than 5 mg per deciliter. Maximum recommended dose of allopurinol is 300 mg 8 hourly. Allopurinol may trigger an attack so wait 3 weeks after an acute episode and cover with regular NSAIDs and colchicin. If patient is already established on allopurinol, there is no need of stopping it during acute attacks. In the longer term, annual monitoring of uric acid levels is recommended. In most patients, urea lowering therapy needs to be continued indefinitely. Feboxostat, another xanthine oxidase inhibitor, is an alternative of allopurinol and is used when allopurinol is contraindicated and is not tolerated. It undergoes hepatic metabolism and no dose adjustment is required for renal impairment. It is most effective at reducing serum urate than allopurinol, but the number of acute attacks with the use of both medications is same. Uricose uric drugs increase urate excretion but are seldom used in routine clinical practice. Included in this category are probenicid, sulfinpyrazone, and benzbromerone. They are contraindicated in overproducers and those with renal impairment or urolithiasis, and their use requires patients to maintain high fluid intake to avoid uric acid crystallization in the renal tubules. Peglotikase is a biological treatment in which the enzyme uricase oxidizes uric acid to 5-hydroxy isourate, which is then converted to allantoin. It is indicated for the treatment of tophaceous gout resistant to standard therapy. It is highly effective at controlling hyperuricemia and can cause regression of tophi. That's all for now guys. Please leave a comment below and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.